Hi, I'm AJ from Pinnacle Diving, and today we'll be covering skills demonstrations for your open water scuba diver course. Stay tuned. Now this will be part one of a multi-part series, and we'll be discussing the skills required for the NAWI open water scuba diver course. The skills being performed in this video will cover entering the water holding fins, putting fins on at the surface, breathing at the surface without a mask, and this is taking five breaths with your face submerged, descent with minimum weighting, regulator clearing, both methods one and method two, regulator retrieval, all three different methods, mask clearing, S drill or the long hose extension, share air, frog kick, removal and replacement of the buoyancy compensator underwater, and launching or deploying an SMB. The goal is 60 seconds or less. First up is entering the water holding fins. What you want to do is place your hands through the fin straps from the front side of the fin so that the fins are hanging from your wrists. And what this does is it gives you full use of your hands both on both sides so that you can hold on to guardrails or anything that you need to for safety while you're entering the water. Next up is putting fins on at the surface. Now if you're flexible you can do this however you're comfortable doing it, but if you're not that flexible like I am, I like to put one foot behind the opposite leg and then use the opposite hand to put the fin on that foot. So my right hand for my left foot, my left hand for my right foot. Next is breathing at the surface without a mask. Now this is one of the initial things first introduced during confined or contained water portion of your training. And the reason being is because it's psychological in nature. Doing this first helps people later on when they perform the mask removal and replacement drill. It lets your mind know that you can breathe underwater without a mask, getting you used to the idea of the cold water on your face while doing so. The goal is to put your face in the water, take five normal, calm breaths, and then come right back up to the surface. Now, how you find your minimum weighting is going to depend on the cylinder that you're using, whether it's steel or aluminum, and your equipment setup and exposure protection. But the descent with minimum weighting is the same regardless. For whatever your minimum weight is, you should be able to have an empty BC with no air in it. And if you take a big breath, you should float just at the surface. Exhausting the air should allow you to sink as long as you're not fidgeting or kicking unnecessarily. And once you get below the surface, breathe normally and you should be able to control and be yourself and be totally neutral with just your breathing for about the first three meters. Next, we're going to get into self-rescue skills, and the first will be regulator clearing. There are two types of regulator clearing. There's forced exhalation and there's purge. Here I'm going to demonstrate the first type, forced exhalation. I'll pull the regulator out of my mouth and you'll see bubbles coming out of my mouth. Then I'll put the regulator back in and I'll breathe out, and this will clear the water from the regulator. After that, I'll do the second type, which is purge. I'll pull the regulator out of my mouth. I'll, you'll see bubbles come out of my mouth. I'll put the regulator back in and I'll push the purge button. And when I do this, I'll put my tongue on the roof of my mouth so water doesn't shoot down my throat. The next set of self-rescue skills are regulator retrieval. And there are three types to this. There's the reach back, the sweep, and the pull. Here, I'm gonna demonstrate the first, and this is the reach back. I'm gonna take the regulator out of my mouth and throw it behind my shoulder. You're gonna see I'm gonna grab my secondary and put it in my mouth. This is so that I have something to breathe and I don't need to hold my breath. I'm going to reach behind my neck, find the hose, trace it back to the regulator, put it in my mouth, and I'm going to clear it using either the forced exhalation or the purge. The second is the sweep. I'm going to take the regulator again and throw it over my shoulder. I'm going to reach out in front of me, bring my hand down to my leg, bring it around and tilt my body to the right hand side, and make a big circle and this will put the regulator in front of me. I'll find the hose, trace it to the reg, put it in my mouth, and again, clear the reg. The third is the pull. So if I can't do method one or method two and find the regulator, I'm using a long hose and that long hose comes right across my chest. I can grab the long hose and pull and the regulator will come from around my neck to the front. I can make a loop, put it back over top of my head and swap regs again, put my primary back in my mouth and again, clear it using either method one or method two.
The next self-rescue skill is mask removal and replacement. Now from a previous video I talked about how people had problems doing this drill and it's because they tend to flood their mask from the bottom. Well I tell everybody that you should start by flooding the mask from the top first, not the bottom. And this is so water doesn't shoot up your nose. So what you do is you grab the strap from behind the head, you pull it around to the front, then you grab from the top of the mask and flood the mask from the top first, pulling the mask off. When you go to put the mask back on, you put the mask on your face first, and then you take the strap and pull it behind your head and clear the mask. To do this, you push on the top of the mask, look up and blow air out your nose, and the air will push the water out the bottom of the mask and clear the mask. Now the next drill that we're going to do is the S drill or the long hose extension. You're going to switch regulators, extend the long hose completely, replace it, switch back, clear the regulator and secure the long hose. Now you're going to do this at the start of every dive for the rest of your diving career and the purpose of it is to simply show your buddy that the entirety of your hose is fully available and not caught up on anything should it be needed if there's never a need to share air. It's also a great time for your buddy to look you over and make sure that all of your equipment is proper and that you're not leaking anywhere. Once you go to put it back, there's two ways that you can secure your hose. One, as you just saw me do, was to tuck it into the waistband. However, the second, as you're gonna see in this next demonstration, is to take the hose and loop it up underneath something on the waist belt. For me, I'm using my weight pocket and the drop D-ring on the back end as the means to secure my hose in this particular example. Next, we're gonna talk about a buddy rescue skill, which is sharing air or the out of air drill. This is when your buddy gives you the signal that I'm out of air, I would like to share. So when you see this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your primary and you're going to extend the long hose completely and offer it. And you notice I'm grabbing the hose, not the regulator. And there's a purpose for this. And this is every single time I grab the regulator, specifically, I'm always grabbing the hose. And that is so that when I give it to my buddy, the purge button is readily available. They can grab it, put it in their mouth, and use that purge button if they need to. Next, let's talk about propulsion techniques. You're going to learn the flutter kick, but we're also going to show you the frog kick. This is the minimalist version. Here, you want to bring the heels together first and then the toes. The entire leg is not moving. You're moving just the lower part of the leg, primarily keeping the knees spread apart slightly, allowing the ankles to turn inward as you make the kick. Now, the reason we do this is because this is the most optimal form of propulsion for diving. It keeps respiration low, which keeps your sac rate low. It allows you to control your buoyancy better and you feel better throughout the dive. Another and more complicated self-rescue skill is removal and replacement of your buoyancy compensator underwater. Now, notice I'm going to be doing this from a neutral position. I'm not going to be on the bottom. I'm not going to be on my knees. And I, I made a mistake here, and I want to leave that in the video. I mean, it, of course, I'm human just like anybody else, and even sometimes I make mistakes. So what I do first is I take the long hose off and secure it on the right-hand side D-ring. What I should have done next was take my SPG and disconnect it from the crotch strap D-ring and put it on the left-hand side of the waist strap D-ring but I forgot to do that. After you move both of those, then what you wanna do is undo the waist belt. If you have a chest strap, you wanna undo that. And if your shoulder straps are adjustable, you wanna loosen those up too. Notice I'm taking my left arm out first, and this is because my air source is on the right-hand side. And if I pulled the entire BC around to the left-hand side, it would just wrap the hose around my neck. So you can see here, my waist strap got caught up on my leg because my SPG was still connected to the crotch strap. So I had to disconnect the SPG and I had to move it to the left side waistband D-ring. So I pull the whole thing around to my right side and I'm pulling it tight close to my body. This is because all my weight is in my BC. I don't have any weight on my wetsuit. I'm not wearing a weight belt, right? I don't want to float away from it. 
When I'm ready to go back in, it's the opposite. I put the right arm through the shoulder strap first and I grab the bottom of the tank with my right hand and I pull it around to my back. And then from there, I can put on my waistband, I can grab my crotch strap and I can pull that up. I can get my chest strap connected uh, and then I can also tighten my shoulder straps last and I'll be back into the BC just like normal. Now the purpose of this particular drill, the ability to take off your entire BC and all the equ associated equipment underwater, is if something is loose, if your valve's not all the way open, you can't reach it, you know, if there's something you need to fix behind your back and it's not possible for you to get to it while it's attached to you, then you are capable of taking off your equipment without the need to surface uh, and being able to manipulate everything and fix and correct things. Once uh, the BC's back on, I'm going to put my SVG back on the crotch strap D-ring. I'm going to take my long hose and disconnect it from the uh, sh waistband D-ring, put it back on normally, clear it, swap regulators and clear, and then tuck the long hose away like it should be. Done. Now the last skill we're going to do in this video is launching or deploying an SMB. And the goal is to be able to do this in 60 seconds or less. Here, from the time I start to the time I let go and let it rise to the surface, I managed to get it in 30 seconds. Now there are many great uses for SMBs. When boat diving, it's the signal for the boat to see where you're at when you intend to surface. They can be used as an emergency signaling device if you get swept out to sea. They can also be used as a flotation device if need be. Either way, once you prepare it, you take the double ender off and secure it to a D-ring, unravel the SMB and inflate it using one of the four different inflation methods. Here I like to use the exhaust bubbles from my regulator. Let it go, let it rise to the surface, then take your double ender and secure it if you intend to do a safety stop or hold on to it and slowly work your way back up to the surface, assuming that you're going no faster than your maximum safe ascent rate. Remember, slower is always better. Well, thanks for watching. Again, these were the skills demonstrations for the Naui Open Water Scuba Diver course that you can look forward to doing during your course. I hope that you look forward to part two and have a great day. Thank you.